out shopping for homes, you'll realize that most of the market is resale. Actually, one out of four homes is new construction that is a purchase. Going out and trusting the home builder to guide that process is sort of like going to the car dealer and trusting them to perfectly guide the process. Whose best interest do they have in mind? Hey, my name is Dan Inman, your local realtor and guide here to the coastal Virginia area, and you are watching the Living in Coastal Virginia channel. There are advantages and disadvantages to both resale and new construction, but you're really interested in new construction. So let's give you 10 ways to save big, whether on time or money, on new construction. Number one on this list is talk to the agent again early. You want to start this process as early as possible. Like I said at the very beginning, going out to a new construction site and expecting them to perfectly guide the process with your best interest in heart is like trusting a car dealer to trust that they have your best interest in heart when they're trying to sell you a car. You wanna make the most amount of money. Part of that early conversation is going to be establish a budget. You want to make sure that you have a really good idea in mind of what is the base cost and what are all the ad addition things that you can add on and put, put, tack on. Again, just like the car dealer, you go out there and you're looking for, let's say, a Corolla or a Camry. Well, they're gonna try to talk you into the next model and the next model, we go from the basic trim level to the nice trim level, and all of a sudden you're out there, out the door with a brand new Lexus top of the line model with every option available, and you blew that budget way out. You're going to want to determine a comfortable price range that you want to operate within, give a few allowances for the indulgences here or there, and especially if you have a home to sell, you need to coordinate that and line those up perfectly so that you don't have two mortgage payments that you're paying for. Number two hits on number one a little bit, but it's understanding the difference between a buyer's agent and a selling agent. The agent that's on site, who do they represent? The builder or you? In whose best interest do you think they have at heart? Yours? No. Beautiful part about being a buyer in the market is that the seller pays for the costs. That builder has that line item already budgeted for, whether you use their person or you use a dedicated buyer's agent. A dedicated buyer's agent, according to agency law, has to have your best interest at heart. They're going to bat for you on every legal item and every deposit, every option to make sure that you're putting your money in the best possible position and not being taken advantage of. This includes things like inspections. Yeah, doing an inspection on brand new construction property might actually be a good idea. Another one might be home warranties or even options or all the other little things. You know, the buyer's agent has been out there in the market month after month after month and done dozens and dozens of properties. They know when they're looking at that spec sheet or the options sheet, whether or not that is inflated price or not. You want to make sure that you're getting the best value for your money. Number three is gonna be a builder for all reasons and seasons. This sounds kind of silly, but what do I mean by this? There are a lot of builders out there, some that do two or three or four homes and some that do dozens and dozens and dozens. One of the things you want to make sure is that you do your research. There are a lot of builders that don't have the greatest reputation online. Just because you saw beautiful photos that were sent to you online or that you found it on Realtor, Zillow, or Truly, or wherever you found it, doesn't necessarily mean that everything behind the walls or the reputation behind the person building it is phenomenal. Before you pull the trigger and go and put a deposit down on a new construction home, you want to make sure that the consumer affairs reports, all of the things that you can find, the Better Business Bureau, the reputation online, whether that's Reddit or Quora, look up that builder and what their reputation is on online before you go out and put a deposit down on the property. Number four is get the facts about the builder. Like I said, just like there's a variety in reputation, there's also a variety in what they actually offer. Some do basic two by four, some do two by six construction. Some offer improvements on the insulation and the type of utilities that you can get, like the HVAC system and how efficient that is. It's not gonna be a bad idea to go to several different builders, compare specs, compare the floor plans, and make sure that you're getting the most for your money. Going out and putting a deposit on the first new construction home that you see just because you fall in love with that one kitchen doesn't mean that you haven't given up something that potentially could be better. Again, back to that car analogy, going to the lot and buying the very first thing that you see without doing your research could end up costing you big. Number five is check out the neighborhood. You're gonna wanna drive around and see what's going on. Many of these big new construction sites are built in phases, one, two, three, four, or five phases. It might not be a bad idea to go to the first or second phase to see how are the homeowners living and taken care of. Maybe talk to a few neighbors and see how they actually like living there. Go to the local pool or the clubhouse and see if people are there and talk to them about what they like and dislike about living in that community. If there's a homeowners, a property, or a condo association 
associated with this building development, you wanna know what those rules are before again you go and sign that bottom line. Do your homework on the neighborhood. Number six is choosing or understanding the upgrades. Now, I've had it go both ways. In some scenarios, the amount that the builder was charging to upgrade or go to the next thing was totally outrageous. But the other part to consider here is if you could go in and do a like or equivalent job afterwards. Uh, you know, is, could you go and hire someone or do it yourself for far less? Or is the price that they're giving you actually pretty reasonable? And because they're doing 100 homes in the neighborhood, the tiler or the plumber or the electrician that's doing those options gave them a little bit of a discount and actually would be more difficult for you to do those upgrades at the same cost want to make sure you understand the full cost of those before you sign the bottom line. There are just some upgrades that are cheaper to do at the beginning than it is to do later. Let me give you a perfect example. The addition off the back or the sunroom, the three seasons room. Doing that up front might actually be cheaper because then you don't have to worry about ripping off siding and redoing the pillars and, and the foundation and everything that's included, redoing wiring. Doing it all up front might actually be more cost effective at the beginning. And again, if this is wrapped into your mortgage rather than paid out of pocket later on, just a few more dollars tacked onto your mortgage rather than having to come up out of pocket later. Number seven is negotiations. And this really is dependent on the market. Now, obviously, if they have 17 other buyers lined up behind you ready to put their money down on the deposit, it's gonna be very difficult to negotiate. It doesn't mean that you can't and you shouldn't push back on certain pieces but depending on how competitive it is, it may be very difficult to do so. But understand that you can always push back, you can always counter offer on certain pieces that is totally allowable and there's nothing wrong with it. In that negotiation, some builders, if you use their preferred lender or their closing company, will give you a little bit of a discount. Uh, that isn't necessary for you to get the property that you want at the price you want, but you may end up having to negotiate a little bit back and forth and give some concessions on who you end up using if you want the best possible price. Number eight is making sure that the contract works in your favor. And there are several categories here to pay attention to. You wanna make sure that you protect yourself by having safeguards into the contract that work in your favor, such as making sure that when you place your deposit in escrow, knowing the date in which you can actually get that back, and if so, how much. You also wanna make sure that you are fully detailing out and have in writing what the cost of those upgrades are. If the completion date isn't for three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 months into the future, you wanna know what the cost is and you don't wanna be subject to increases in labor or material costs just because they go crazy. You wanna lock those in if you have the ability to. Also wanna make sure that you know whether you have access to the work site and if so, how much time frame that you wanna to need to be able to give up in, in advance of, that you're planning on making a visit to the site. There's absolutely nothing wrong with you going visiting and making sure that things are done properly and that the place is an absolute disaster or wreck or things are being done haphazardly in the construction process. You're absolutely totally allowed to get a home inspection and multiple if you want to. Most of them require some advance notice, which is totally fair and you know, for safety reasons, they don't want people walking on and off the site, but uh, you wanna make sure that you reserve the right to have that home inspection if that's something that's important to you. Also because, again, those closing timelines can shift depending on what's going on in the seasonality of either construction, again, labor or material prices and availability, you wanna be able to give it enough notice, right? You don't wanna to be told, hey, by the way, you need to close in a week. So you wanna make sure that they give you enough advance notice. 30 days is pretty typical. Again, you wanna have that spelled out in writing. Lastly, and in my opinion, probably the most important is what are the builder and manufacturer warranties that will be conveyed with the property and how long will those be in place? You know, just because it's new construction doesn't mean that things won't break. Just to give you an example, even on a car, I use cars as an example a lot, but on our car, we had the starter replaced not that long ago, probably less than 5,000 miles. Last week, literally, our starter died. We took it into the shop, it was like, it couldn't be the starter. It just so happened that we got a lemon part, something that just directly from the manufacturer was broken. This can happen in new construction too, and you want to make sure that you know what those warranties are in place before you close. Number nine hits on a little bit what we talked about earlier, which is financing. Again, the builder might, because they do high volume, have some preferred lenders they work with, they give discounts or decrease closing costs. Again, you are by no means obligated to use them. You can use whatever lending institution that you want, including my wife next door who runs the YouTube channel, Your Smart Mortgage Guide. She's always gonna tell you whether it's best to go with her or the institution that's in place. You just want to make sure that you are weighing multiple options here. 
uh, when considering new construction and not just go with the person that you're being pushed towards. Number 10 here is just because it's new construction does not mean that it is perfect. It is totally acceptable and okay for you to do that final walkthrough and go and double check. You know, sometimes contractors can be a little bit messy. Sometimes they make mistakes. I'll give you an example on a new construction property. The person who was doing the painting was a little bit sloppy and got some on the cabinets and on the countertop. It wasn't a huge deal because it was easy to be scraped off and removed, but we were able to go through and do basically what's called a punch list where you go through the property and you can mark it with tape. That's what a lot of them do. You mark the tape and make a list of, hey, here are all the things that I would like to be completely finished before we close on the property. You're buying a brand new construction project, and so it's totally okay with you to make requests from the builder to finish that project out nicely and not buy the property with these, all these little imperfections because they are there at walkthrough. Getting the builder to take care of these instead of you addressing them themselves, right, could save you a couple hundred or even a thousand dollars if you had to take care of themselves and pay a contractor out of pocket after closing. Hope you found this list incredibly helpful and that it will help you avoid some big mistakes that we've seen buyers make with new construction. Hey, if you'd like somebody to help represent you on new construction, to have somebody advocating on your side and not the builders, setting those up for you in advance, all of our contact information is down below in the description. You can jump directly into our calendars there. Again, we always advocate that you start that process as early as possible. And please, 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 please do not click this video right here. YouTube doesn't think that you'll like it at all. Don't click it, please don't. And also don't subscribe. We don't need any more subscribers. No subscribers, no likes. And if you're gonna leave a comment, blast us negatively down in the comments.